Input. Your workbook has a table of the attenuation for 2 to 16 way splitters. Splitters also have a frequency range specification over which they operate. This can range from as little as 5 to 54 megahertz up to over 1000 megahertz. When a source signal such as cable or off air is split to four or more destinations, an amplifier should be used between the sources and the splitter. The gain of the amplifier is chosen to overcome the signal loss in the splitter and coax cable runs to outlets. Amplifier gain is a measure of how much the amplifier amplifies and is always given in dB. A 10 dB amplifier will increase the input signal amplitude by 10 dB. Gains of from 5 to 20 dB are typical for broadband RF amplifiers. Amplifiers come in both variable gain and fixed gain models. Fixed gain amplifiers are typically available for 10, 15, and 20 dB gain. In residential applications, the distribution amplifier is often combined with splitters in one package since the two are so commonly used together. One input is amplified to several outputs. To support cable set-top boxes, many distribution amplifiers have a 5 to 50 MHz return path built in to allow upstream signals from the set-top box back to the cable company central office. The opposite of an amplifier is an attenuator, used to lower the amplitude of a signal. They typically come packaged in a barrel shape marked with the dB attenuation level. You'll find these commonly in 3, 6, and 10 dB versions. You can screw them together to achieve any amount of attenuation you need. Structured cabling systems should also incorporate the distribution of in-home generated video sources, such as the output of DVD player, satellite receiver, or a camera, so they can be viewed on any television in the home. Distributing in-home sources requires installing an additional coax cable and jack and outlets where DVDs or other sources are located. The downstream cable from the distribution center to outlets that carry cable company or off-air signals is referred to as the external cable. The added upstream cable is referred to as the internal cable since it carries in-home RF sources to the distribution center for redistribution on the external cable. At the distribution center, the internal cable runs are combined, mixed with the external signals from off-air or cable service, and split as before to all external outlets. Let's take a look at how this works to view a movie from a DVD player in the family room on a TV in the master bedroom. The DVD player audio and video outputs connect through an RF modulator to the internal coax connector. The television is connected to the external coax connector. To view the DVD player, the TV is tuned to the channel set on the modulator. Modulators are really small television stations that broadcast a baseband audio and video source onto a cable or off-air television channel. They have baseband audio and video inputs and an F connector RF output. They also come in a wide range of sizes from single source single channel to four source four channel models. All the modulators you'll be using are frequency agile. That is, you can select the output channel in either the cable or off-air channel range. You need to do this to set the modulator channel to one that's not used by local off-air cable channels. Now to make modulators relatively inexpensive, they transmit both sidebands of a television picture, leaving out the expensive circuitry required to remove the lower sideband. This means they require a 12 MHz bandwidth, 6 MHz at the channel they're set to, and 6 MHz of the lower channel. Therefore, if you're using multiple modulators in a system, or combining modulator outputs with cable or off-air signals, you need to leave one unused channel between the selected modulator channels. So if a modulator is set for channel 80, for example, it will actually use channels 79 and 80. Modulator output levels are usually high, typically 25 to 35 dBmV. This comes in handy since they're usually placed in the internal path of a coax distribution system where losses are high before reaching a distribution amplifier. Next, let's cover filters, a very common component in RF distribution systems. They're used to pass one range of frequencies while blocking others. The most commonly used in residential applications are the low pass and band stop. The low pass filter passes signals below a specified frequency and blocks signals above that frequency. Filters are specified by their pass frequency or pass channels, usually given as cable channels. Real-life filters are not perfect. 
the attenuation increases gradually in the block part of the spectrum, reaching a maximum of minus 30 or 40 dB. Low-pass filters are typically used with cable or off-air service to block frequencies above a certain channel, so that in-home modulators can be inserted into the channel space above the block channel. For example, this channel vision low-pass filter is rated to pass below 648 megacycles or cable channel 105. The attenuation slope is about 4 channels or 24 megacycles, so the closest inserted channel should be 109 or above. A band stop filter blocks a range of frequencies. These are also called notch filters and can be used to remove one or a group of channels. This channel vision notch filter blocks cable channels 61 through 68, providing four channels, 63 through 66, for use by modulators. A diplexer is a combination of a high pass and low pass filter in one package. They're used to either combine or split two signal frequency ranges. The most common example is this diplexer that will combine the output from an off-air antenna up to 850 MHz with the output of an LNB between 900 and 2150 MHz. They're typically used to allow one coax cable to carry both off-air and satellite LNB signals, combining them at one end and splitting them back out at the receiver.